This is the GTN Show. This week we're going to be discussing the ITU, reversing that controversial new rule. We're also going to be talking about a man who has run more than 10K every day since 2013. Ooh, that is a lot of running. Ooh. We're also going to be discussing some new pro triathletes joining the Bahrain Endurance 13 team. And our big news this week is that coffee may well become extinct. Right then guys, before we get stuck into the show and the news, I thought we'd have a bit of fun. See, have you ever left any of your sports gear festering away in the car? Your swim stuff, your suck stuff, your run stuff maybe? I know people who have. Oh, okay. <laughs> I mean, come on. I mean, you guys have never been in my car, have you? <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, it, it's pretty gross. And imagine what that feels like for our friends, our partners that are jumping in our car or just have to hang around with us wearing some of that kit. So, I was wondering whether you would recognize some of those smells oh. if I was to, say, uh, blindfold you. So, uh, <laughs> cap each, pull them down over your eyes, and let's play What Is That Smell? <laughs> okay, are we ready, guys? Yeah. Okay, you can't see anything. No, 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 can't. Can't. No, All right, I'm gonna give either. you both a sniff each first. <laughs> 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 Okay, Heather, you're not allowed to touch it. <laughs> oh, I don't think I want to touch it. <laughs> we'll smell it. Oh, okay, yeah. hold it, hold it. Are you think you got it? Is it my turn? Oh, you're not allowed to touch it, Fraser. Oh. <laughs> yeah, okay. Yeah, well, okay, uh, do, on three. Do you know, I wouldn't one, like that smell. Two, yeah. three. Wet seat. Yeah, it's very dirty near Give Good bit of neoprene. Okay. It's not dirty, it's just, a, just like Fraser. neoprene. Uh, okay, next one. These haven't been used. Uh, <laughs> oh, plural. Mm -hmm. Cause well, yeah. Yeah. Oh, I'm actually smelling something, am I? Yeah. Mine was now. I can't really smell okay. it. There is a bit of a whiff. Yeah, yeah, you got that. Okay, three, two, one. New shoes? A pair of shoes? Definitely new shoes. Shoe. Not new shoes. New, oh, something, something interesting! New. Not it's new. something new. Very interesting. No? I thought it smelled like, it smelled like chemicals. No, 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 it's alright, it's cool, yeah. Well, <laughs> yes, yes, well, now let's move on. Okay, next one, ready, Heather first. Oh no, that's not new. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> it's Fraser, like this. Like this <laughs> I can't work it out, but it's not good. Okay, three, two, one. Use socks. Oh, oh is that what it is? Yuck. Okay, all right. <laughs> not doing very well here. Okay, I need to prep this last one. I haven't quite got ready for it yet. Okay, ready. Okay, uh, Heather first. Oh. Oh no. It's warm, it's about warm. I oh, will get too close to this one, Fraser. <laughs> I still don't know what that is. Okay. That's another one. Three, two, <laughs> one. Worn trainers again. Okay, oh, interesting. Are, no, the other ones are trainers. Okay, caps off, guys. I'm really sorry about that last one. Oh. So it was socks last, <laughs> oh. and then we had trainers just before oh, that. Oh, trunks. And swimming trunks. I was not trunks. smelling your crotch. <laughs> <laughs> don't know. Um, well, that is, what is that smell? Right, you wake up in the morning, and what is the first thing you do? Probably grab a coffee. Yeah, pretty often. Yeah, I love my coffee. And it has been proven to have a potential performance benefit, as well as just wake us up when we get up in the morning. But what if I told you we are running out of coffee, or maybe even becoming extinct? Yeah, I mean, it's pretty dramatic news. We've just heard that apparently 60% or up to 60% of wild coffee species could be extinct in the next two or three decades, which could even include the, the more renowned ones, such as Arabica and Robusta coffees, which you think, you know, they're our everyday coffee. They're planting them all the time. Yes, we're drinking them all the time. And are we to blame? Um, well, apparently not just us personally, but it is the bigger picture, the fact that um, climate change is affecting how they grow, deforestation and just the lack of space. So, you know, their plantations are being shrunk down and it could potentially be Yeah, a major I understand. Problem. Yeah, just by like condensing the plantations, they just can't grow as well. So they're looking at other methods like these seed banks where they put the beans after. Um, but yeah, I mean, this isn't great news, is it? It isn't, no, but it's going to lead us on to our GTM poll for this week because we want to know how much you rely on coffee and how big an impact this is going to have on your life if we do end up running out of coffee. Yeah, so how much coffee do you drink per day? So one option is zero, or next option, one mug, 
or two to three mugs or four plus. And as, as, <laughs> as always, you can enter that by clicking just up here. But now for last week's poll, where we asked you whether you go on training camps and if you do, how you fit them into your daily life. So um, in last place, we had other with 2%. Yeah, then next up, it was actually an equal tie for as part of a holiday or regularly, 13% um, for each of those. And then in second place, we had only once per year, and that was 17%. And more than half of you, 55% said never. Wow, ah, such a shame. Well, we did have some uh, <laughs> comments coming in, some suggestions. So, Danielle Banki said, um, Massa Maritama, Maritima in Italy um, is a great place for cycling, but also got some great running and swimming there. Um, I'll zoom in on yeah, this Yeah, I was one. gonna say, I need glasses. This one from Super Pong Chiang Chai says, please come and try our best to, best place to train called Tanya Pura. Now, I'm hearing a lot about that at the moment, actually. There's a lot of pros at Yeah, with. exactly. Um, a a nice, place. nice island, Phuket, Thailand. Lots of pros come here and do the triathlon thing because of the nice weather. Food, gym, sea, and most precious thing is the people. Well, I think we have to go. Oh, sounds <laughs> great. Um, and then lastly, Robert McDaniels said, I have a quick question. How long do these training camps last? And that is a really good question because, to be honest, there is no set answer. Some people will literally go for a long weekend if the flights aren't yeah. too long. Um, you might want to just go for a week. Um, and to be honest, that might all be... All be the only amount yeah, of time exactly. you have around your work. Two weeks is a great yeah. amount of time. But... I mean, I personally think, well, within reason, I say the longer the better, but when I was a pro athlete, I mean, by the end of two weeks, you're kind of wanting to come home. Mm. But... No, I agree, and it depends where you're going. I've done a few months in some places before, oh. so it is totally dependent on how much time you have available and how much time you want to spend there. Yeah. Sport can be pretty addictive. It's hard to beat that buzz that you get after a good training session that you've accomplished, but, when you have to do it every single day, it's a slightly different matter. Can you imagine running every single day of the year, whatever the weather, it doesn't matter how tired you are, it doesn't matter how much time you've got, you have to do that. Well, there is one man who has, and he's done it for 2,222 days. Yeah, very impressive. Now, this guy is called Jim Plunkett Cole and is better known as Jim Gump, which is obviously a nice little nod to old Forrest Gump. And he was inspired by the 2012 Olympic Games and basically set out on the 1st of January 2013 to run no less than 10 kilometers every single day for that year but that then just carried on and he just kept going year in year out and even in 2015 completed a triathlon each day a 750 meter swim a 20k bike and of course a minimum 10k run each day so very impressive yeah well he wasn't just purely inspired to keep running well, i think the first year that was the target and then obviously he carried on but he thought what can i do you know with this and he set up a project called kx365 where he's trying to get children and adults actually to do something or do a bit more activity every day and he's been using the stories that he's had from you know running he's run all over the world doing this and to really just help inspire people and you know show the the benefits of exercise maybe not implying that everyone has to run at least 10k a day yeah but the reason we're mentioning this is because this is a very special moment for him and his friends and family because tomorrow the 30 31st of January he's going to be completing and finishing his end to all of this running a minimum of 10k every day it's 2222 days Days of running in total and he's going to complete have completed a total of 22,000 miles in the process um, and he's chosen to end it on the 31st January rather than the new year simply because well, it rounded up really nicely otherwise it'd been 2,192 which just doesn't sound as good does it? It doesn't no massive congratulations yeah. and yeah very inspiring story. Now last week we discussed the new ITU rule that banned the use and display of rainbow flags during competition and that rule stated that athletes will avoid any demonstration of political, religious, sexual orientation or racial propaganda. Now it's this addition of that sexual orientation that really sparked quite some criticism within the media and also started some petitions. Well the ITU have now announced that it was apparently a misunderstanding with this rule and the rule was there to actually protect the athletes from people demonstrating against them and there were some rumors as well that it might have been to do with the fact that the first WTS series was going to be in Abu Dhabi but at the end of it they've changed the rule and well reversed the rule and taken it out. Well now for some sponsorship news and it's a Bahrain Endurance 13 team that have just announced some new additions to their already very well established team so we've obviously already got the likes of Jan Fredino, Daniela Reef, Terenzo Bazzoni, 
Javier Gomez, Holly Lawrence, Ashley Gentle, Ben Canute, um, and they are led by the team captain, Sheikh Nasser Ben Hamad Al Khalifa. And I think I've included everyone that's still there. I mean, Did you say Alistair Brownlee? I think so. Anyway, yes. Alistair Brownlee. But yeah, um, but now they've got three new athletes to the team and quite some athletes as well because we've got the two time ITU grand final winner, Vincent Louis, joining the team. Very interesting. Yeah. We've also got the two time Ironman 70.3 Middle East champion and also 70.3 distance record holder um, and that is Christian Blumenfeld. I probably saw that one yeah, coming, but so. very cool. And then finally, one I didn't see coming was the bronze medalist for the Commonwealth Games in the para triathlon, and that is Lauren Parker. Yeah, That's it's great to see that they've kind of really broadened their range and having including power athletes as well. And finally, one of the most wanted features on Zwift is now live. You can, within reason, choose which world you're going to ride in that day. Yeah, so whereas before you were basically told which course you are riding and you don't have a choice, you now can ride the Watopia course, which is basically the Zwift Island, you can ride that on any day you like, as well as the secondary map of that day. So that will obviously be as an option to you, but if you want to, revert back to that Swift Watopia course. So you basically got two options each day. You do, yes. So it, it still cycles through the other secondary map, but that Watopia course, always available. Great. And yeah, this is a new update that is all being released across, well, basically all platforms at the moment, if not already. Cool. It's now time for race news. And the season is really starting to get underway now. We saw Ironman 70.3 South Africa on the weekend. Now the conditions weren't perfect, so much so that the swim actually got shortened to an 1100 meter course. But that did not deter Elliot Smales of Great Britain who came out of the water first. Down in fifth, it was Bradley Weiss, 23 seconds back, but he soon made his move up through the field on the bike to take the lead and ended up coming into T2 with almost a two minute advantage over fellow South African Matt Troutman. And Troutman though soon closed that gap and actually by halfway through the run had almost caught up with Vice, but I think he'd gone a little bit too hard too soon because Vice opened up the gap again to take the overall win and it was second to Matt Troutman. And making it a one, two, three for South Africa, it was James Kunamar in third. In the women's race, it was a battle between Amelia Watkinson and Emma Palland. Amelia Watkinson had a 24 second advantage coming out of the water. And then by the end of the bike, she'd managed to extend that advantage a little bit more having a minute's lead over Emma Pallant but we know Emma is renowned for her running and just 6k into the half marathon have pretty much closed that gap but seeing social media posts from Emma I don't think she was particularly well the night before and I think that showed because she didn't manage to hold on to Amelia Watkinson and Amelia Watkinson found another spurt to go ahead and take the overall win leaving Emma Pallant in second and Jade Roberts in third. There was also racing over in Israel and it was the Israelman 226, one of the toughest long distance triathlon races on the circuit. And the men's race was won by Christian Alstadt of Germany and the women's race was won by Antonina Reznikov of Israel. It's time for the caption competition and we had this photo of Tim Don from last week. Lots of great suggestions. Now Mark has selected these and as a result, I think Mark, you have to read out this first one, one of our runners up um, this week. So Mikel Zubita, um, ha, well he made reference to Gollum <laughs> and obviously I've done a Gollum impression, impression recently which really wasn't very good so I, I really apologise for this. He says, <laughs> must have the precious sneaky little triathletes. They stole it from us. My precious. <laughs> um, that's terrible. <laughs> really bad. Check out Lord of the Rings if you wonder what Earth Mark's talking yeah. about. <laughs> Uh, but Ian Povey uh, also said when the pros order from Wiggle. Now I need to explain this one because this is quite funny. Now a Wiggle, for those that use it in, well, it's mostly European based, I think. Um, they always send a little Haribo package when, yeah. you, but it's a tiny little Haribo package. Uh, Tim Don's obviously overdone, you know, gone over the top with this and got a massive, um, <laughs> massive pack. So. Yeah, uh, but though our winner of this week's cap goes to Amos Noon. Congratulations, Amos, with the caption. Sweet spot is Tim's favourite session. Very clever, very good. I so like yeah, that one. well done to you. Uh, but this week's caption comp photo is actually all the way back from the Ironman World Championships. We're still hanging on to it. Yeah, uh, dreaming, <laughs> Kona dreaming. Um, and this is actually from the age group race. Um, so I don't know who these athletes are, but they do have some very famous photos from underneath the water. And these two obviously decided they'd make the most of it dunk themselves yeah, down I mean, in, the, they, in the middle. Yeah, little do they know they're going to get dunked as soon as the race starts, but maybe they're just like warming up for it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, but yeah, please do drop your captions in the comment section below.
Well, now it's our chance to look through some of the photos that you send in to us, particularly the pain caves. We seem to have a lot of them at the moment. But this week, we have quite a special one to start off with because Lucy Charles and Reese Barkley, or Lucy Charles Barkley, actually, oh, I should she? say. Yeah, now, I guess she is. Um, they sent through some photos for us to feature because they have just revamped their own pain cave. And I think a few of you are going to be quite jealous. Yeah, I mean, we it's the same setup or the same um, space that they had before, the same equipment, but it's had quite a major facelift, I think it's fair to say. Yeah, so um, a lot of photos of them, it appears. But, yeah, I mean, um, it's one way to motivate not? yourself, isn't it? I mean, if you've if you've won as many medals and as trophies as, as Lucy has, then looking at yourself has got to give you some motivation, I guess. Yeah, but look at them. They've got their, their bike set up there in Atom, front of... Atom what bikes? Yeah, and very like impressive screen, sort of nice and low, obviously. So they're when they're in the aero position, they're not looking up. So that's very well. Yeah, that's very true. I guess no point in having a screen up there, is it? Cycling along, trying to get aero. Yeah, but nicely fitted into the wall, very clean with the hashtag Teams Charles Barkley up on the wall. Um, but a lot of weight equipment and like gym equipment in there as well. Because they've got the boxing ring, which I understand is um, Lucy's dad's background is in boxing. So there's a lot of boxing references within the pain cave. It just looks really cool as well. I mean, if you don't use a boxing ring, if you've got space for one, why not? Well, we can look at this all day, couldn't we? I know, um, sorry, you guys then, probably getting bored of <laughs> But then also the endless pool we haven't mentioned, so that's a very cool feature. So obviously you can go through one of these doors, I think beside the bikes, and then boom, you're into an endless pool, so. Yeah, I mean, with the forecast that we've got coming the next few days, I wouldn't mind a pain cave where you could do all three sports and not have to go outside. Yeah, yeah, very, very cool. Two right. treadmills, two, oh, yeah. Yeah. We, yeah, anyway. How are we gonna follow <laughs> this one up then? <laughs> Uh, so we've got another one sent in here from Robert, um, and this is from Poland. Um, he's got his Cervelo P2 set up on his turbo trainer in amongst uh, soundproof bands. Yeah, <laughs> so. I was gonna say, if anyone's gonna hear him training, you're not gonna have neighbors complaining at the noise of your turbo, are you, <laughs> yeah. in that setup? <laughs> he's listed off some of his uh, equipment. He said, Cervelo P2, obviously, <laughs> his Pearl drum set, his Fender, um, a jazz bass, um, is a Galen Kruger bass amp. Um, <laughs> say so, it like yeah. you know, <laughs> no yeah, one is what <laughs> um, But yeah, very nice. That's really cool. definitely a, a different pain cave. Yeah, I love seen. it. Uh, next one is from Yannick, and this is from Ooh. Quebec in Canada. And um, he's got wow, quite a bike setup as well. Look at this. Entire family wanted to get into triathlon. How can you refuse my wife and two daughters wanting to train? Oh, what a nice story. So we decided to take some um, extra space in the attic. That's a large attic that we finished a few years back and create the pain attic. Oh. Wow, and they've got a Pinarolo F10, a Fell FR3W, a Fell FR5W, and another felt FR5, big felt fans, obviously, yeah. and one of them I reckon really likes his, I reckon his might be the Pinarello. He's <laughs> sorted the rest of the family out with the felts. <laughs> yeah. uh, really cool. And finally, last one from Neville, and this is from Swansea, just down the oh. road from us. Um, what was the you, oh? No, it was like it was cool. It's like he's obviously wanting to be really, indoors. I'm really just sorry, you spent Neville. The, you spent the weekend in Wales, all right? <laughs> <laughs> That's a great place. Um, and he's riding his Giant Defy Pro. Um, uh, he's got his own, very own Zwift Palace he calls it. Um, Palace, there we go, it. there's an upgrade. Yeah. Um, uh, he's preparing for Ironman Wales 2019, oh. so this year, so nice yeah. And local. Best of luck to you, um, and yeah, some great pain caves this week. Please do keep sending them in using our GTN photo uploader. Well, that is it from us and the GTN show this week. Yeah, it is, and if you're inspired to do more indoor training, like you've seen some of those great pain caves, and you want some new kit for that, you're going through your summer kit rather fast, well, click on the link for the shop to check out all of our GTN kit, and if you have, enjoyed this video hit the thumb up like button and hit the globe to make sure you get all of our videos by subscribing to the channel yeah if you'd like to see our latest minimalist Ironman training video then just click down here for that and if you've only got 15 minutes but you want to get a workout in and you want to see GCN's Hank get a little bit sweaty alongside me well that video is just here <laughs> <laughs>